Alzheimer's disease affects 40 billion people worldwide. It is the only top 10 leading cause of death that we cannot prevent, cure, or even slow down. Since 1901, when Dr. Alzheimer's first came up with the disease, we have, not came, we have not come very far with progress. There has not been a single cure for this disease, and that reason is because we don't know a lot about the brain and diseases like neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson, and depression itself. So the only step to learning more about these diseases and coming up with cures is to find people who have a passion for looking into the cures. Through the science research program at my school, over the past two years, I've been studying Alzheimer's. I came up with a meta-analysis, which means I took five different sources, and I looked at the effect of EGB-761, which is the drug, and its use as a potential therapeutic treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by extracellular deposits um, of amyloid beta peptide AB for short, and microglia-dominated neuroinflammation. So that's a mouthful, but basically all that means is that there are two key components to Alzheimer's disease. One is microglia-dominated neuroinflammation. So microglia, when it's present in the hippocampal region of the brain, which is the area that deals with processing memory, it causes the brain to shrink. This is a healthy brain, and this is an advanced Alzheimer's disease brain. So as you can see here, the brain with Alzheimer's is a lot smaller because of deterioration than the healthy brain. So what this microglia does is it causes cell death in the brain, which, makes, um, which reduces the life expect expectancy of Alzheimer's patients. The second part I want to talk about besides microglia is amyloid beta peptide. We're going to call it AB for short, because it's a lot easier to talk about AB. So what AB is is a sticky substance that, when present in the brain, it causes plaques and tangles. So you can think of this like a piece of paper. Let's say we had a piece of origami. When you fold origami, you can make it into any shape you want for the most part. But let's say the piece of paper had sticky parts to it that weren't supposed to be there. When you fold this piece of paper, it's not going to fold correctly, and things are going to stick together that aren't supposed to. That's exactly what happens when you have Alzheimer's disease. The brain actually has ridges and folds, as you can see here. So when a sticky substance AB is present in the brain, the brain doesn't fold correctly, so short-term memories are not able to be transported to long-term memories. So how can we test this on mice models to start? So there was two groups of mice. Both had Alzheimer's disease. One of them was given the drug EGB, and they tested the spatial navigation, as you can see here. So the mice went into a maze. And what they wanted to test is how um, fast can they go through the maze and their distance. So the reason why we're testing mice in a maze, you might think to yourself, what does this have to do with Alzheimer's? Well, to test the memory of rats or mice, um, you can't ask them what did they have for dinner last night and see what their answer is and see if it's correct. You can't ask them questions to test their memory. So the only way to test the memory of these mice were with spatial navigation. So like I talked about before, the hippocampus is the region of the brain that deals with memory. But what's also important to note is that the hippocampus is the region of the brain that also deals with spatial, na spatial navigation. Thus, we can conclude that if this drug helps the rats with Alzheimer's with their spatial navigation, we can infer that this will help their memory as well. So we took, um, this, the researchers took two groups of rats, both with Alzheimer's, one with the drug EGB and one without it. And they both went into a maze, and they wanted to see what happened. So through these graphs, you can see that with the distance, the distance of the rats with the EGB761, the drug, went a lot farther in the maze. The distance was increased significantly than the group that did not have this drug in them. The other thing that was tested was, late, was latency. So latency means the amount of time it took for them to figure out their way around the maze. So what's important to note here is that because the distance and latency were both um, significantly better than the ones for the ones um, with the drug than without the drug, we can infer that their spatial navigation was a lot better in the maze when they had the drug present than when they didn't have the drug. So the other thing that was tested was what I talked about before, this microglia, this thing that causes cell death in the brain. So significantly, microglia was decreased when this drug was present in the brain than when it wasn't. 
So this shows that not only does this EGB761, this drug, not only does it help with the distance and latency and spatial navigation in a maze, but it also decreases the amount of microglia. The microglia is the thing that's helping to cause Alzheimer's. The other thing I want to talk about is this AB. This AB is that sticky substance I talked about before with the origami and how the brain doesn't fold correctly. There's plaques and tangles. What's really important about AB is that these plaques and tangles create a system that blocks short-term memories to be transported to long-term memories. So when I was five years old, I remembered how to ride a bike because it was my short-term memory and it was the year it happened. Now at 17 years old, I still remember how to ride a bike because my hippocampus transported my short-term memory to a long-term memory. Now with Alzheimer's disease, um, temporarily this doesn't happen. And because of this AB load in the brain, the sticky substance, these short-term memories that were once transported to long-term memories aren't continuing to be transported. So here you can see that um, in the hippocampus, which is the area that deals with memory and spatial navigation, um, the one with EGB, the drug, had less AB than the one without the drug. Similarly, in the cortex, the cortex is the part of the brain that the hippocampus lies in. So this also deals with memory and spatial navigation, and it's important that they use both the cortex and the hippocampus rather than just the hippocampus because it shows that this drug doesn't only affect one area of the brain, but a diverse area, uh, multiple parts of the brain. So um, now we have that AB loads are um, significantly decreased when EGB is in the brain. Also, microglia is significantly decreased when EGB is in the brain, and also spatial navigation is better. So what my future research is going to be is not only looking on how we can get this to humans, because humans have a more complex brain structure. But another thing that I want to look at is instead of looking at a brain that has this microglia and this AB and all the things that make Alzheimer's what it is, I want to start preempting that. What I mean by that is looking at a brain before it has the effects of Alzheimer's disease, before it has all of these things that make Alzheimer's disease what it is. Pinpoint the area of the brain that these th or things are originating from and try to block it before it even starts. The problem with Alzheimer's research and finding a cure is that by the time people realize that they do have Alzheimer's, their brain is already um, completely damaged by this microglia and this AB and um, the plaques and tangles and everything else that makes Alzheimer's what it is. So it's really hard to try to cure um, patients with Alzheimer's when their brain is already completely um, damaged by these things. So how can we look at a brain before it's damaged, before it gets to that point where it's too late? Pinpoint it, block it, to make sure to preempt it so that these things don't actually occur. Thank you.